Last time, at Struggle Downs Feedlot, Darren Hamblin offered us a rare glimpse behind the gates, a journey that began in the vast northern breeding grounds and wound its way to the heart of their cutting edge, animal first feedlot. Join us as Darren guides us into this next chapter, the story of hard earned progress and the promise of what's still to come. Feels like everything's just dropped off my shoulders now and life is back to normal. And when I say back to normal, it's a lot easier now than it was before feeding cattle. So now that we've got the robots and the sheds in place, the desire to bring more technology in is it's just opened up so many windows for me now. Things I've been wanting to do for years are all abled. So we'll have the thermal cameras in soon, the normal cameras in soon just for monitoring. All of the net feed intake work I've always been wanting to do is now able to be done and live data. The robots can well and truly cover the, all the needs that I had there. The list goes on when it comes to all of our genomics work, linking our uh, DNA, genetics, and then all our phenotype, you know, feedlot information, paddock information. It just opens up a whole new world of AI and um, predictions. But through the whole process of the design, you know, the acquisition of the gear, the transport and the installation DOM distribution have been fantastic. They've been here on site with the guys from Wasabawa and um, the information's been flowing well. There's been no hiccups at all. Um, and I would recommend that they're a good distributor to um, buy equipment through. The feeding system automation process uh, part of the project went very well. We anticipated it was going to be a two week install. The Wasabawa gear arrived on Thursday about lunchtime off a truck from Brisbane. We unloaded the eco shuttles on that day. The next day the feed ports arrived and we unloaded them directly and put them in place. So we were prepared with the civil work. We knew the dimensions and the layout. So when they arrived, they were here, they started the installation immediately and we finished on Thursday, two weeks later with a short week in there. So it was actually nine days of work it was incomplete and the robots were running. But Joe and Matthias came over from Austria. Um, they were fantastic. They just jumped straight into the installation. Luckily, they speak very good English. They're good guys. They enjoyed staying and working here on site. Uh, they enjoyed going hunting at night, but uh, they worked very long um, days and they were very enthusiastic the whole way. Technically, they were brilliant, both electrically and mechanically and just generally good guys to work with. They worked in well with the other contractors. This installation involved others other than Wasabawa. They concentrated on their parts of the project, which was the feed kitchen and the eco shuttles. We also had um, grain storage and liquid supplement storage, which involved other contractors, um, plumbing guys, and a few other people involved. Uh, the electrical guys, they worked very well in together. It was well orchestrated and um, yeah, there were no hold ups in that process. I was very happy with it. The dairy style bunks that we built from the start, that was in anticipation for the robots. And it's worked well. It even worked well prior to the robots arriving with the tractor pull machines. We did make some modifications to the original plan based on what I saw when I was over in Europe and um, it's just the angles and the corners, the arras that we put on the edge of the concrete. I'm glad we saw them, that's worked well. Since we've started here with the robots, we haven't made any changes to the bunk, it works as planned. The feed rail, we've made larger, adjustable, it's working well as well. We've had to learn new ways to, to understand feeding. Um, the traditional methods are once a day or twice a day feeding. The robots are feeding multiple times a day. These ones at the moment are doing 21 uh, drives a day to feed. That's all going very well. It's probably more up to us now to understand how to best utilize that and understand the information we're receiving from that. So I'm very happy with the consistency of the feed. I'm very happy with the fresh feed there in front of them all the time. We just need to understand better how we can use that to our advantage going forward. Our initial setup, we have different feed schedules. Some groups of animals are feeding four times a day, some are feeding nine. We still haven't been feeding long enough to understand which is the better of those two. Their consumption appears to be the same as it was prior to the robots coming. 
They do, however, seem a little bit more um, keener to come up and feed when the robot comes past. Now, whether that's just a, a fad, whether that's just an exciting thing for them at the moment and that wears off, I don't know. But if you look behind me, there's always cattle feeding. Having said that, I think the sheds have a lot to do with that. They can feed all day and it, um, they're not affected by the sunlight. So our daily schedule as uh, operators of the feedlot has changed. Our focus has gone from making sure the cattle are fed on time, now we don't have to worry about that. Um, to the extent we have to be careful with the robots because they're doing work we don't have to think about anymore. We have to make sure that their commodity boxes are full. Um, in the past, your priority was to make sure the cattle are fed. Now it's making sure we keep the commodities up to the robot. Now that's a good thing. It allows us um, a bit of flexibility in our time. We can now go off and do a lot of other things around the feedlot that we would not have done in the past. They were always second priority. Now some of those things include spending more time looking at the animals, observing their habits, observing the data from the feed kitchen, from the robots. So it's, it's very positive. All the changes are very positive. Since we've been feeding in the sheds with the robots, we've noticed a slight increase in overall intake. As far as what times of the day they're eating, just from observation, visual observation, they're, they're not eating much through the night. They're sleeping, but we've sort of intentionally done that. We've um, given them time through the night where the robots aren't running. As far as reading the information in the bunk, with the robot laser, we're yet to analyze that in detail. Uh, there's always feed in front of them and we can let the bunks slick out when we wish just by programming them to do so. So our bunk health is fantastic. We, um, the bunks are always getting cleaned more often. Um, gives us time to go along and inspect that. We've designed our drives for the robots uh, by shed and by ration. The reason for that is we want to have different drives at different times of the day to enable us to get a slick bunk on the shed which has the sun on it at a certain time of the day. So our shed A will have the sun on it between 2 and 3 p.m. and our shed B will have the sun on it between 7 and 8 a.m. So we just manage our feed times to suit that and we get it to slick out during those times so we get the natural sanitisation of the bunk with the sun on it at this stage of the project, we're still feeding the same rations that we always have. They appear to enjoy the fresh feed all the time. The eco shuttle coming past does excite them to eat, so I'm assuming there's a, an effect there. When we settle in and we feel that we've got the system mastered, then we can start to play with different meals at different times of the day. Uh, I've got some good thoughts on that, but at this stage, it's only a theory. So the role of a worker here at the feedlot has changed. Initially now, because we don't have many staff here, we need those people to be multi-skilled. They have to understand the technical aspects of the robots, which luckily they're easy to learn. The things that's changed in their daily routine is when they come to work, the checks are, let's make sure that there's enough uh, feed in the commodity boxes. Once you've done that, you're free to go off and do whatever's most important around the feedlot. So maybe check on some outside cattle, feed them first. The robots will just continually do what they're asked to do on schedule with accuracy all day. So the only thing we can fail there is not keep the commodities up to them. So if I was asked by other feedlots generally what I think of the system, my answer is if you're building a new install, the sheds and the robots are a no-brainer, both um, for the outcome for the cattle and also financially. Well, the initial outlay and the ongoing costs a retrofit to an existing feedlot, not so. I think there'll have to be other um, solutions there, but for shedded dairy style bunks, the robots are definitely the best way to go. Uh, with the information I can gather in our system here now, I certainly can help the industry, but my advice to people in the industry is, rather than looking over the fence of what I'm doing, collect your own data, that's where the gold is. So systems like this will allow you to do that. The installation phase here has been a quite a hectic time for me. Uh, Work-wise, it's not been too bad, but I've had a lot of people here, a lot of logistics to manage, 
um, a lot of people that want to visit. And it feels like the, everything's just dropped off my shoulders now and life is back to normal. And when I say back to normal, it's a lot easier now than it was before feeding cattle. So I can now get back to the task of really managing my whole supply chain um, right through to our box beef. And that just um, makes me feel a lot more comfortable with what we've done here. We look forward to sharing the next chapter with you in the future with real world data driven outcomes.